good morning to you. Just for a moment, imagine Jesus is standing behind you. With his hands on your shoulders, gently pulling you back into your seat, gesturing for you to let him take over. Close that body's eyes and feel that. Feel him, feel his light behind you. That Christ light in front of you, on either side of you. Feel it in your feet. It's what moves them. You think you move them. He moves them. Feel his light in your legs, in your arms, in your hands. It feels like my cells are dancing, and yet there are no cells here. Not really, there's no body here. Joe Goldsmith says a human being cannot be spiritualized. A human being cannot be spiritual. A human being cannot be God or the Christ, but in proportion as the human being dies to his humanhood, Christhood is more and more revealed, sometimes more to the onlooker than to the individual himself. That probably explains why a mystic cannot claim to be a mystic. Do you not see that in the moment that a person has experienced the Christ, he has beheld perfection, and from that moment on, he is comparing himself with that perfection? Do you see how unworthy he must become in his own eyes, even while others may say he has improved or he is a better man? The individual himself cannot feel that because he is always measuring himself against the perfection he has experienced, and he knows how far from that he is. So Jesus could say, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. A man walking the earth cannot say, I am the Christ. That really is sinful, but for a person to know that the Christ is his identity is quite another matter. And forgetting his past sins, he looks forward to attaining the realization of that Christhood. If you hear within you, Thou art my Son in whom I am well pleased, be still and know that I am God. You are hearing aright. That gives you no privilege to say those words because in the saying of them you reverse the meaning. The moment you say that you are the Christ, you have lost it. It is only when you hear that still small voice say those words that you are hearing truth. When you say, I am Christ, I am spirit, I am God, you are trying to immortalize a human being and you have only to look in the mirror to find that you are lying. But when that still small voice says to you, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, even though that person may at the moment appear to be dying, or in dire need, you know that God has spoken to him and revealed his true identity. Then there must come a healing. The ideal way of living is to be in the world but not of it and to perform all the functions of your business or profession and still not be of it. No one should believe that the spiritual life is intended to set him apart in a monastery or convent. A function of the spiritual life is to bring your spiritual influence into the world. Yes, go up on the mountaintop for 40 days and nights to be inspired of God, but then come down to the plains and the seaside and heal the sick, forgive the sinners, raise the dead, and feed the hungry. To enable the student individually to rise so high in consciousness that he recognizes God as the central theme of the universe and all evil as merely the impersonal belief in two powers, and thereby nothing eyes it, is the function of this work. We're not affirming, I am love. I am love. You're filling it. You're being it without the words. You're hearing it without hearing it. Can you feel the difference? The effort of constantly affirming I am love and ceaselessly praying the feeling love, 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 love. That's why it's really powerful to practice on beads, on your rosary, on your mala. Not the word love, L-O-V-E, but the feeling on every bead. And then putting the beads down. And then you becoming as if a bead. It's like I'm feeling love in every step right now, but I'm not walking. I'm rocking. 
And now I'm not the one rocking, I'm just the love that I thought I was feeling. You're the love that you think you practice, that you think you remember and forget, that you think you turn to. There's no one turning. There's no one in need. There's no one sick. There's no one poor or strapped for cash. There's no one needing to figure out how to make it to next month. He got you to this one. He will carry you further. As long as you know you're not that you. Stop being her. Stop being him. Be love. Love takes care of love in the shape and the form of you, of that one that's sitting there rocking, trying, listening, filling. While you appear to be that one, you rock, you try, you feel, you listen, but you simultaneously know I am not rocking. I am that I am. And it's just a feeling. That feeling informs me of this truth. You read it or you're told it and then you practice it. And then there's no practice left. My book, Wake Up to Love, is full of practices to get you to the place where you don't need even one. You never needed one, but you think you do. And until that thought goes, you practice. Today, please, for once, try to not demand love appreciation, attention. Just be it. Be that which you're seeking. Give love, not so that you may receive it in return. Give it until it feels like receiving, and then you'll have it. You'll have everything, because you are everything and nothing, and that's where the beauty is. I'm everywhere and nowhere. That's why you can feel me. That's why you feel like I know you, because I do, the part of you that is me, too. You're not facing that problem alone. I'm right there with you in your ear, whispering, it's not really there. Relax, calm down. Jesus is standing behind you, both hands on your shoulders. I'm taking over. Rest this weekend. Rest in me. Trust in me. Give me your mess. Give it to me. And watch what I give back. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I'm with you. And we'll chat soon. If this episode helped you feel good, helped you feel God, then leave a review on Apple Podcasts and screenshot it and send it to me for a free gift. And follow me on Patreon so I can see you, so I can see your smile.